Hi, my name is Eduardo Lara. I'm going to show you the latest agent framework uh, coming from IBM as an open source project called B. So, what is an LLM agent? So, when we think about LLMs, we think about uh, having a single um, trained large language model, this uh, huge um, neural networks and having an input of a user query being passed through that LLM, uh, maybe with some uh, few shots which are just examples of the type of answer that we are looking for the LLM, and then we get as a response the, the answer, right? So you think about the um, all the first iterations of the chat GPT and other types of, of uh, agent, they, they were not agent, but just like assistant-based LLMs, right? Or or question-based LLMs, right? And and in that you were basically querying the knowledge that was trained in the LLM through the thousands and millions of documents that it was used um, in its inception, right? Then last year, especially, we saw this um, increase in uh, the need to of have the LLM response to answers uh, to questions with um, a based on a context or, or a source of truth. And so this rack pattern, this retrieval augmented generation pattern was, and this is still very popular, right? In which now you have the LLM and you have a vector database in which you first search for uh, context or you search for paragraphs that are of interest and you mix that with the user query and you pass those two into the LLM and then the LLM come up with a, an answer, right? So, and this decreased the risk of hallucination, uh, this also increased um, the accuracy of the answer that we were looking for and this really works in, in in a vacuum for some specific use cases, right? But now what we are seeing the market shift to uh, and really trying to um, come up with better ways of developing, it's uh, this uh, idea of agents in which the LLM is not only directly answering the question or using some uh, context or corpus of knowledge to answer the question, but it's really thinking through the steps needed to uh, answer a uh, maybe more complex uh, query or more complex in instruction. And then uh, after thinking about those steps, it is executing those steps, right? Uh, to achieve a final answer. And what researchers found out is that when an LLM um, tried to break down all the steps to be able to fulfill a query or instruction, it increase its accuracy and also um, decrease some of the hallucination. So they started to see that it, it, it had a better performance. So now with that um, idea in mind, an LLM agent is different for any of the zero or few shot promptings or the uh, fixed flow like a rack in the ability that it will define steps necessary to execute a query. So those steps are really key in, in this agent um, landscape that we're seeing. So on a higher la level, now what we have is that the LLM is like the computer or the reason behind how we're gonna break down a problem into smaller problems. And those smaller problems I'm gonna be able to solve using a tool library that uh, the LLM already knows that exists, right? So Think of it, of, of it as the LLM knows it has an utility belt of tools that are, are specific to solving some types of, 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 of queries or problems. And so when an, an user query comes in, it's going to uh, try to define an execution plan. And those, uh, those steps in the execution plan will use one or none, but one or more of the um, of the tools that it knows it has at its disposal, right? So that is the LLM agent. Then it will 
execute those in the order that it proposed, and then it ha it will um, produce a final answer. So this is the logic of a con uh, that is controlled by the LLM. So as you can imagine, this is very versatile way because basically it, it is it is programming, if you will, itself, but it, it's really um, like dynamically uh, programming the flow which it will uh, it will use in every case depending on the question and depending on the context right so when we program an LLM obviously we the, the L, uh, we, an LLM agent the LLM is uh, really important for reasoning so there are different bench, benchmarkings for LLMs, so there, there are some LLMs that are better at extraction or entity detection, others that are better for um, generation of new content, um, but there are some of, of, of the LLMs that have been proven to be better for reasoning. So reasoning is just, and I'm going to use quotations here because reasoning is really that ability just to come up with the steps that uh, really need need to be done like in, in a change of thought prompting right and this is what we have here in the right that that chain of thought that in this uh, images is, is depicted as linear but it really could be also with some loops uh, in that chain of thoughts right so the system from uh, so when when we select the LLM uh, that has a good reasoning now we have to come up with a system prompt right and, and this is really a long prompt that is telling the LLM basically to, to behave like an agent, right? To think in the steps, to um, uh, come up with uh, soup answers, uh, to have an, a, a specific output schema, to uh, use the tool, right? The utility belt that it will have. So what are those tools? So we have to have tool description, tool schema. What are the inputs of those tools? What are the output? How will it, it, it will interact with those tools, right? So all those are baked into a long prompt, which is called a system prompt. And sometimes it has a memory just because it, it, it is assistant-like and maybe we have a conversation. So, but those all are part of the, of the system prompt. So we have a row, uh, again, you are a helpful assistant, you have an instruction, right? And, uh, just basically how to break down and how to reason um, the output schema, how do we want to control the logic. So uh, in this case, B uses a, a schema of, of uh, having the message of the user, the thought, so just an, 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 a simple step-by-step uh, -step of description of what it's going to do, then the function name that it's going to call, the caption, the input, the output, and the final answer, right? And it can be more complex as it defines like longer chains of thoughts, right? And then um, we need an, a parser of the output, right? Because this output, as you see, can be um, stating that the, in the steps it needs to call different functions, and this function can be an API call, it can be a, a vector database, it can be anything. So we really need to be able to parse that output and and, orchest and orchestrate the calling of those tools, the invocation of those APIs and on all those utility bells. Um, maybe calling other LLMs could be part of those uh, uh, parsed output and then we get the final answer, right? So just an example and we're going to see this in the demo, in the quick demo. So I have a function uh, name that is, is, is being used, in this case it's Python. Um, it's the here's the code that it is proposing um, the function caption the function out and then the function output expected and then someone needs to execute that right uh, some of the hurdles that you may encounter right user interaction complexity uh, performance right reliability uh, so it, it's really uh, a field of exploration uh, uh, but it's a field with um, tremendous opportunity for building uh, successful AI applications. So now let's talk a little bit about the B stack. So B uh, is really an open source stack project coming from IBM. It is focusing on uh, observability throughout the whole stack and, and really providing uh, agentic applications 
for all types of open source models. It's not just focused on one type or, or one family of open source model, but it, and really they are using the lesser maybe known open source model or used, right? Like Llama 2, Llama 3, 3.2 and, and others to be used as the um, memory or, or as the computer of these uh, LLM L L L agents, right? So it's, it's defining an UI for non-developers users. It is defining a, a, a Python SDK and a B API for developers users. It's defining a code interpreter that it's gonna take those uh, uh, function calls and it's gonna execute those. Maybe it's an API call, maybe it's a, 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 an actual Python code that is being generated and needs to be executed. So there's security implications in there when we have a code execution. Um, and then uh, in the B agent framework, which is just this um, tools that they put uh, at your disposal to be able to um, quickly implement an application, right? So that's the vision is to empower a full stack software developer to adopt agent in production. And we're uh, and they're doing so with open source models so, such as Granite or Llama. This is an overview of the architecture. Again, they, they are uh, very tied into the infrastructure that they propose. So uh, the observability, uh, it's uh, been implemented with MLflow, the, the vector database with Milvus, some object storage, some databases. So it, it's coming with all the necessary parts, all based on Docker containers or so the security of the execution of code, for example, and the interpreter is at least being uh, um, framed and, and secure in some way, right? Um, and so with that, um, I think I'm gonna move into the into the demo.